Carolina. And I called in and, and literally did the Dr. Lou. And uh, so many people responded and said, I'm so glad that Coach Holtz is still following the program. <laughs> and so it, it was like, it, it was totally me. But everybody was like, yeah, I'm so glad he's still following the program, even after Skip's going to South Florida, blah, blah, blah. And so, it, yeah, it was pretty funny at the time. But, uh, yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll give it to you at some point. But <laughs> Okay. Uh, what about uh, – you said uh, when we had you on earlier, you talked about Lou Holtz and about some stories. Can you give us a classic story on Coach Holtz? Oh, man. Uh, tons of them. Um, tons of them. Um, you know, he was, like I said, I loved him and hated him at the same time and probably vice versa. But, um, man, there was, uh, you know, our first spring practice, I'll tell you this. So, all right, I'll give you a little Lou. Here we go. All right, so our first spring practice at the University of South Carolina, he comes in and the spring practice, our first, you know, before the 99 season, uh, the year, you know, we went 0-11. Um, he comes up, he, he, and we were out there, and we're just practicing our ass off. Everybody's running around. Everybody's trying to do the right thing, blah, blah, blah. And he does his whistle, and everybody goes running over to him. And, you know, we all thought we'd been doing a great job and all that and this is this is true y'all this is true so so the very first spring practice he says this he says one thing's for certain you come to the university of south carolina for one of two reasons a you're a loser or b you just like to surround yourself with other losers and that's the first thing he said to us during spring practice I mean, it was, and, and, and we were, we thought we had been doing like a great job. You know, everybody's busting their ass. Everybody's trying to, you know, impress the coach and staff, the whole deal. And that's, that's the first thing he said to us. Um, I got a million stories, but I, yeah, we're not going, we're not going to go there. <laughs> well, I call him Shank. Um, he's, he's, he's a great guy. Great, great football coach. Obviously has spent a lot of time in Greenville. Um, and, um, no, he's 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 a very very intelligent football coach, uh, Donnie Kirkpatrick, who I think is back there now. Also, that both those guys I worked with, and they're both great football coaches. Um, but you, you know, I think I was blessed to have James Pinkney my first year. Uh, James was a very talented quarterback. Uh, had a little experience under his belt. Uh, he could throw it a mile, and he was he was willing to absorb coaching. Uh, which is what you want from great players like that. So, um, but you know, I, I, I was, you know, I was pretty fortunate in that situation. And so we had, we recruited well early. Um, and then golly, we, we, you know, won two conference championships and had a, had a really good run there. No doubt about it. When you look at, uh, I was talking about that, but if you look at the 2008, that 2009, those teams winning back-to-back conference championships. Ironically, that's the last time we've won a conference championship. You would think with Pirate football that we would have won one or two at least, uh, but it's hard to believe, Coach, that uh, that it's been a drought since 2009. Well, I, I have, and I'm not just saying this. This is, you know, I, I don't have a dog in the fight anymore, so I can tell you this. they they got a really good staff, really good head coach, really good staff, and uh, the right parts are in place. Um, we were fortunate to get a couple of really good players, especially on the defensive line uh, when we were there, and then we had good skill guys. And, um, but uh, yeah, they can compete with anybody, um, and they know that, and people know that. Everybody knows that. I mean, heck, they beat, they've beaten South Carolina several times. <laughs> You know, and so it's it's they beat a lot of people, and so we, I know when we were there, we beat you know Virginia Tech, West Virginia when they were ranked in the top, you know, fifteen, and so it, they'll 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 get it back there, uh, and I think the right guys are in place to do that. No, absolutely. I want to talk to you, Phil, about while you were here, that coach, then uh, and then eventually you were a tight end coach. There seemed to be a change in the offense when Skip first got here. Maybe it was out of necessity because of what we had. 
But when, when Skip first got here, it seemed like we were doing a oh five oh six. It seemed like we were doing a lot of full wide stuff and, and getting him shotgun and kind of kind of being wide open, kind of kind of kind of more toward what college football is now. And then uh, the next couple of years, a lot more conservative on offense, getting under center, running the ball more. Uh, was that just? Was that what Skip would rather do? Is uh, is be more conservative on offense, or was it just that our defense was so damn good? Why risk turning it over? Yeah, I think it's a combination of both. I think you know, Coach wants to be. He, he, I mean, he, <laughs> Coach Holtz, and I say Coach Holtz. That that means Lou. Um, and then I think just learning under him. I think Skip was was a little conservative at times, but at the same time, he allowed us to open it up a little bit. And then Todd, you know, Todd Fitch came in, uh, who I have the utmost amount of respect for, who's a very, very sharp football coach. Um, you know, when, when Todd came in, he, 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 you know, kind of tweaked things here and there. Um, but, but it was here, here, you know, that the thing you have to understand is it's, you know, from the outside looking in, it may, it may look different. It may look the same. Uh, but it, in reality, it's it's basically doing, you know, you're, you're you're adjusting your offense to the strength of the players around you, and you know, at different different years there, we had we had different talent, different positions offensively, and so what you do is you tweak things um, to their strengths, and and you you try to give them the best chance to be successful. Yeah. Miracle on the mine shaft this weekend, loved it. Uh, what do you remember about that game where uh, Cass throws the, the Hail Mary to send it into overtime and then uh, we beat uh, the Miners in overtime? I remember seeing Juarez. That was about three miles away. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, thank God I'm in his press box. But, no, um, it, uh, that was a hell of a game. Um, you know, my price says they're, 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 they're good guys. Um we were actually pretty close to some of those guys on that staff, and that that was a hell of a football game. But um, yeah, to go out there and get the win was pretty special. Um, it's a long travel. I think we got back at I don't know, golly, it was it was it, the sun was up. I can tell you that. Um, so it was early in the morning we got back from that trip. But it was a man. It would have been a tough, tough loss, but it ended up being a a really great win. Devon Drew is one of my favorites. Um, it was a pleasure to coach him. Um, he was a high school quarterback, came in uh, as a quarterback, and was about to – well, Skip was – I mean, he was he was about ready to get rid of him, to be honest. Um, and I said, let's wow. just give him a home. You know, and I, and I when I moved uh, – when, when Skip moved me to tight ends coach, and I said, I'll take him, you know, any day of the week. And, um, and he ended up – working his butt off and gaining some weight and, um, you know, really bought into the system and, and what he, what I told him he could do, <laughs> what he, you know, and, and um, he, uh, you know, God, I think it was a fourth or fifth round draft pick and uh, to the Ravens and he ended up having a great career at East Carolina. And, but what a, I mean, it's, it's guys like that uh, and Jason Halter, um, who also was a tight end at the time. I mean, it's, it's guys like that that, you know, that make uh, make coaching very rewarding. There's no greater person um, that I could have ever coached uh, or, or that I'm friends with. Uh, he is he he is the epitome of a great player, a great person. Uh, his work ethic, everything. Uh, he, had, he had he had very good talent, and um, but that that. He, he he Jay's one of those guys that makes coaching fun, and uh, you know he's he's the type of young man that that you know you want your your daughter to marry one day. I mean he's just that kind of guy, and um, so he's 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 one of my all time favorites.